In this lecture, we will understand convolution in time property of Fourier transform. Let's assume there are two time domain signals x1t and x2t and the Fourier transform of signal x1t is equal to x1 j omega and the Fourier transform of signal x2t is equal to x2 j omega. And as we are performing convolution in time, we will convolute x1t and x2t. So let's convolute signal x1t with signal x2t and after convolution of x1t and x2t, the Fourier transform will change to x1 j omega multiplied to x2 j omega. So whenever we convolute two time domain signals, their Fourier transforms get multiplied. So this is the property number nine, convolution in time. And now we will try to prove this property. And for this, I will assume x1t convolution x2t is equal to signal xt. So we are having a time domain signal xt. And let's say it is having the Fourier transform x j omega. And we are interested in calculating the Fourier transform x j omega. We already know the formula to calculate the Fourier transform. It is equal to integration minus infinity to infinity the time domain signal whose Fourier transform we are calculating multiplied to e power minus j omega t dt and xt is equal to x1t convolution x2t. So we can write integration minus infinity to infinity inside the bracket x1t convolution with x2t bracket closed multiplied to e power minus j omega t dt and we have already completed convolution so we know convolution of x1t with signal x2t is equal to integration minus infinity to infinity x1 tau multiplied to signal x2t minus tau d tau. So in place of x1t convolution x2t we can write this and in this way we have the Fourier transform x j omega equal to integration minus infinity to infinity this integration again we have integration minus infinity to infinity this integration here x1 tau multiplied to signal x2 t minus tau d tau multiplied to e power minus j omega t dt now let's assume let's assume t minus tau is equal to lambda t minus tau is equal to lambda this implies t is equal to lambda plus tau and this also implies very small t will give us very small lambda and the range of integration will remain same for lambda as the variable the range of integration will remain same as t as the variable so we will have x j omega equal to integration minus infinity to infinity integration minus infinity to infinity x1 tau in place of t minus tau we will write lambda so we have signal x2 lambda i will write d tau as it is d tau e power minus j omega in place of t we can write lambda plus tau so we have lambda plus tau i can separate this as two different exponentials so we can have e power minus j omega lambda multiplied to e power minus j omega tau and we have dt and in place of dt we can write d lambda so we have d lambda now in the next step i will rearrange the equation and we have x j omega equal to integration minus infinity to infinity x1 tau multiplied to e power minus j omega tau e power minus j omega tau and then we have d tau again we have integration minus infinity to infinity x2 lambda x2 lambda multiplied to e power minus j omega lambda e power minus j omega lambda d lambda and you can clearly see we are having the formula of Fourier transform from here we can see that it is giving us the formula of Fourier transform x1 j omega because here we are having the time domain signal x1 tau tau is the independent variable in this equation 
and from here we are having the Fourier transform x2 j omega the time domain signal is x2 lambda lambda is the independent variable so we are having x2 j omega and they are multiplied so the two Fourier transforms are multiplied and finally we are having the Fourier transform x j omega equal to x1 j omega multiplied to x2 j omega x1 j omega is the Fourier transform of xt and xt is equal to x1t convolution with x2t this implies x1 j omega multiplied to x2 j omega is the Fourier transform of signal xt and signal xt is equal to x1t convolution with x2t so x1t convolution with x2t is having the Fourier transform x1 j omega multiplied to x2 j omega so we have proved the convolution in time property of Fourier transform. So this is all for this lecture. If you have any doubt, you may ask in the comment section.